As I look around, I see more and more familiar faces, so I have to say that and introduce myself less and less, which is a wonderful thing. But I also see a lot of new faces, and that's terrific, too. Um, uh, tonight, I'm particularly pleased because I can say something that I haven't been able to say before, uh, and that is that the, this event is sold right out, mm -hmm. um, although there are some empty chairs. However, you know, that's for late comments. Um, I'm not sure if you can say it's sold right out, if it's free, but... <laughs> <laughs> We're very happy that so many people have expressed interest in, uh, in this, uh, this Theatre Museum Goats Backstage event. Uh, several years ago, we came up with this concept of um, doing these panel discussions, doing a series of panel discussions. The first year, we did one, uh, which is not exactly a series. Uh, this year, we've done three so far, and I think we did at least that many last year. Mm -hmm. So we can now call this a series, which is a wonderful thing. I'm very pleased about that, and it's wonderful that we're getting a lot of support for those. Uh, we've also started some themes. Uh, tonight we're talking about text and textile, uh, or textiles for the stage. Uh, last year we did uh, an event at the Battershoe Museum, it was footwear for the stage, which was wonderful. So I'm trying to think of one for the Gardner Museum now, so we'll <laughs> work on that one. Um, of course, being an arts and culture organization, uh, we depend on the kindness of friends, as well as strangers. And we have lots of friends. Uh, the Textile Museum has been very helpful in uh, letting us uh, organize this event tonight. Uh, we have some volunteers who've been helping out. Uh, we have uh, the Vault Studio who is videotaping this for our archives. And, um, and we have uh, Jan Dorland here who designed the program for us and has designed so many things for us. And he's a wonderful volunteer, so thanks to him. And uh, we also have another friend here, Audrey Hosak, who's been a friend of the Theatre Museum for many, many years. Um, and tonight, she's actually uh, donated her space here. Every, every member of the museum is allowed to do one event here, and she decided to donate her evening to the Theatre Museum, so we're particularly pleased about that. And um, Audrey actually wants to say a few words, so I'm gonna hand it over to her, but first let me just say thanks for coming, and I know you're gonna have a wonderful evening. So, Audrey. Thank you. say welcome on behalf of the museum. And I just wonder how many people in the audience have been here before? That's a fair oh, amount. Let me, let me see the ones who haven't been here. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> the, the Textile Museum has been in, in existence since uh, for, for 31 years. So if you haven't found it before, you have something wrong. We hope you'll come back again. We've got wonderful shows here. And we you know, Herb would have been delighted to see a crowd like this and to see the series going on like this. I think I uh, listened to him about the Theatre Museum, you know, for must have been 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> and always hopeful that something would happen. This museum started in a little flat over Ed's Ice Cream Parlor. Uh, they collected rugs and, and whatever they wanted, um, uh, Simon Waysmaker and Max Allen. And one day, a man came in with a bunch of garbage bags, and he spilled out uh, Chinese hats, Tibetan robes, absolutely gorgeous things that he had collected and had no place for. Would you like these? And they said, yes. Well, he turned out to be the godfather of this museum because he was building the hotel next door and a condominium here. He wanted some extra space on top, and he had to deal with the city about getting some airspace so he offered four floors in this building to the city for the textile museum. So we got it free. It's a dollar a year. And so take a look around at our dollar rent. <laughs> I'm moving in. <laughs> I can only hope for you 
but there's somebody perhaps in the audience tonight who knows somebody that's a Fred Breda that will come and say, I've got a building for you. I hope you do. <laughs> Thank you Great. and enjoy the evening. So my name is Mike Wallace and I'm the Executive Director of Theatre Museum Canada uh, and I'll be serving as your moderator this evening. And uh, I won't go into much introduction in terms of our guests, but just so as you know which one's which, uh, I thought I'd <laughs> point out. So we have Sarah Armstrong, uh, who is a uh, textile artist and a costume designer in both uh, film and uh, stage. Philip Aiken is an actor and a director and is wearing those hats and sort of offering those perspectives for us this evening. Uh, and then Astrid, who's a designer as well. So thank you very much, all three of you, for uh, sharing your perspectives tonight. So let's start. So just the, the first question that we had was if you could talk a bit about when it is uh, that you first know what a costume will look like. Sarah, are you okay to start yeah, with that one? Um, actually, Astrid and I were just talking about yeah. that. And um, I think, I mean, there's so many people in this audience that I don't think I need to say that to because I recognize so many people and I think most of us, you know, they're designers or technicians or artists in their own right. But I think for me, when, when it happens is usually when I read the text or talk about the piece, if it's dance or you know opera, it's it's in my head. It's sort of imagining the characters, and because as I, I do primarily costumes, it's generally envisioning the kind of character that person might be, and then sort of developing a story of where they come from, and and then uh, that's generally for me where it happens. Um, I'm probably going to come at this a, a little bit differently than everybody else um, because um, I just kind of burble along about something that I really like. Um, for me, when, I, when I've got a play, I've got a, a show coming up called Black Medea and I tend to be very imagistic in my head usually at about 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. An image, an action, a kind of a movement will happen and then I'll write it down because if I don't, I'll go back to sleep and forget it. And then I'll sit down and I'll talk to the designer and they will get a kind of uh, overload of ideas and images. And I will say, in such and such a moment, I think I want this kind of action and I think maybe the material should have some elastic in it and make it so. <laughs> because, because, because I think what I really believe in is hiring really, really smart designers and shutting up. Um, they're people, they're, I'm, I'm blessed with being able to hire people who know so much more in their fields than I do. And so what I try to do is give an idea, a concept, maybe a color, a flavor, uh, something about how it, it reacts to the scene, whether it's, it's about sensuality, whether it's about pushing away, and then letting the brilliance of the designers come full force. Um, and so I, I like to just feed stuff out and then let it filter through them and, and let them bring it back to me. Because they're going to they're make me look great. <laughs> <laughs> and then can we come back and ask you as an actor? Yeah. Is that yeah? Sure. All right. After, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We need more directors like you. <laughs> <laughs> you said, shut up and leave it up to the designer. <laughs> um, well, I do primarily sets and costumes. So I think that one thing I've learned over the years is that if the world of the play is right or the environment of the play is right, the costumes become inevitable for whatever that means. In other words, um, I tend to want to establish that world first, and then quite a lot later sometimes, the costumes will come mm. to the surface in a way. But if you're doing something like dance or something where it's just costumes, then I'm, I'm sort of like you, or both of you, that you wait until the image forms in your head and tune it in like, a, like an old television set until the picture's clear, and then you can move forward. And is that image that you see in your head, is that often what you see on stage, eventually? Sometimes, but yeah. not necessarily. It can also be, I mean, it, sometimes the um, a particular fabric itself or textile can be quite inspirational. You can think, 
oh, wouldn't, oh, this is perfect for this particular character, or, you know, right. it can work that way as well. Nice. And then, so maybe coming back to you as an actor, actor, when do you find out? Um, I, f I fear that much of what I'm going to say tonight is going to be peppered with, like, theater stories, okay? So I hope that's okay. <laughs> um, it's... It's it's always as an actor because everybody all everybody believes this big lie that theater's collaboration, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not because as an actor you show up on the first day and the sets decided and the costumes decided and the music's mm. decided, and basically depending on the director that you're working with, the only thing that isn't decided is how you're going to say your lines like the director wants you to say them. <laughs> <laughs> So the collaboration has really been done around you. Um, and so sometimes this can be great. Uh, I've had directors who, you know, lead you around the stage where your, your blocking is, so you don't have to think about that. Um, but when it comes to costume, there's, there's a, a wonderful reality that, that can be there before you. When I was doing Warm Wind in China a number of years uh, at the Grand, um, I'm playing uh, opposite Tom McCamus, and it's one of those AIDS plays. And so um, you're on a beach, so somebody has to be in this skinny speed though bathing suit. <laughs> <laughs> and because it's a beach, so the bathing suit was lovely. It was really well designed. It was really small. Um, <laughs> because the beach was there, it didn't, couldn't have as much sand because it had to transform in the second act. So there was a wonderful device of using carpet turned upside down. Right? And it looked just like sand, little niches. Okay, skinny bathing suit, <laughs> bare skin, carpet turned upside down. <laughs> right? It was hell. It was hell. If the sand wasn't getting in your eyes, you were ripping your, your thighs on the... So, it was, for me, it was, it was really interesting because it was a wonderful design. I think it looked fabulous. It was, it, I, hated, I hated doing the show every night because of that. So, design can be huge, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it is huge. And, and, and uh, what seemed like a really great idea in the production meeting, three weeks later <laughs> on, <laughs> is not such a good idea. Great. And I think to touch on that too, it's like, it, as, as a performer, I think the area that you are most impacted by usually is a costume. Mm -hmm. And that's what I find as a designer um, and as a technician, as a textile artist, is that basically, when you have an actor in a fitting, um, you two are working together to decide in some ways what that person's gonna look like. But y as a designer, you're the only person that's in part of that production that actually is physically impacting upon an actor. And so I think, too, that's an important thing as a, as a designer, as a technician, that you know, it is, is when we get back to collaboration, I think it is something that you end up doing more collaboration with a costume designer than you would maybe with, you know, a set designer or a lighting designer. But we, we've lost the we've lost the ability in Canadian theatre due to finances. Designers have to take so many jobs and there's always a bit of an overlap. And and we've lost, I think, something wonderful which was mm -hmm. having designers in the rehearsal process more. And and so we still operate a little bit in, in these, you know, we have production meetings. But there's a difference, right? I mean, there's a grand idea for, for a costume, and then somehow in, in rehearsal, the person is now doing somersaults. <laughs> and then they get the big balloony pants and go, hmm, maybe not, you know? And, and so those things kind of happen. And um, I saw it happen last year at Stratford. I mean, you know, it, it's because we just don't, we just don't seem to have the time or the money to be able to really bring people together um, through the rehearsal process as things change. I mean, it's true. <laughs> I hate designing costumes. I've designed costumes when I didn't even know who the actor was. Hmm. You know, because you're designing nine months or a year in advance, particularly a place like Stratford. <coughs> and, and so you don't even have the body type to, to kind of play off. And you're doing a you're, you're making a lot of decisions early on. Yeah. And I think, uh, for sure, the, the, the costumes will turn out better, I think, if the later you design them. Mm -hmm. Just then, you know, the technicians and everyone else, you're putting them <laughs> through hell. 